In this khutbah, inshallah ta'ala, I will try my best to summarize the most important manners of speech and dialogue in Islam. Because the words that come out of our mouth, you know, they are very important. They are very strong. Do not say these are just words we say. They are wordless. They are not going to hurt anybody. They are not going to count. A lot of people think of what they are saying in this way. They are taking it too easy. But it's not like what you think. Every word you say and utter out of your mouth is recorded and written down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Every single word you say, two angels are recording it down for you. It could be for you or against you, by the way. So do not look down at what you say. What you say is very, very important. And this is what we're going to review and see together, inshallah, in the light of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the teachings of Islam. First of all, before we speak, we have to know that silence is also very important, not less important than speaking itself. You don't have to talk if you don't have something good to say. You know, you don't have to. Because in the hadith, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقل خيرا أو ليصمت. Whoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa taala and the last day, if you are a true and sincere believer in Allah subhanahu wa taala, say something good or just be quiet. So being quiet is an option. It's not just talking, you know. So sometimes you get more rewarded when you are being quiet. Suppose that there is a tough argument going on, and you feel like if you talked. You're going to make it worse. So in this situation, being quiet is the right choice. Even though one of the two sides or the two brothers who are arguing, you know, has the truth on his side. But this is not the time to advocate him and to support him and heat up the conversation. Wait until things cool down and then maybe you can reach out to the brother later on. Tell him, brother, you know, you said this and that. It was not right. You should have done this and that. But when things cool down. So pick the right time when you speak and you speak what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the first thing we have to know about speaking. Think before you speak that you are saying something that you're going to be rewarded for actually. Something good. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, اِتَّقُوا النَّارَ وَلَوْ بِشِقِّ تَمْرًا Said on the day of judgment, we're going to be brought in front of Allah azza wa jal. فَيَنْظُرُوا أَحَدَكُمْ أَمَامَهُ when one of you is looking in front of him on the day of judgment, you look, you find nothing but the hellfire. You look behind you, you find nothing but the hellfire. You look at the right side, you find nothing but the fire. On the left side, the same thing. So you are kind of surrounded by the fire from everywhere. And you are afraid to be dismissed to the hellfire. At that time, you're looking for something good to get you out of that. So the Prophet Muhammad said, النَّارَ Protect yourself against the fire. وَلَوْ بِشِقِّ تَمْرَ Even of a half of a date that you're going to donate. You have one date and this is your food, this is your meal. So you split it and you give half to one of the brothers or sisters who are in need. Then this is going to be a shield and protection between you. And the fire on the day of judgment. فَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ وَلَوْ بِشِقِّ تَمْرَ فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ So if I don't have that one date, at that situation, what shall I do? فَبِكَلِمَةٍ طَيِّبَةٍ So at least, the least you can give is speak a good word. You say one good word. That will be a protection for you from the hellfire on the day of judgment when you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do not look down at the good words you say. Good word you could say to someone, can it change his life can take him out of ignorance and disbelief into the light of belief. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the messengers of Allah جل, and the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they are giving da'wah to their own people to give it in a nice and gentle way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
to Musa and Harun when he sent them to Pharaoh and his own people said فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلَ اللَّيِّنَا when you speak to him speak to him in a soft way in a gentle way لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى so that he will be reminded about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he listened to the words of guidance that you say to him even though Pharaoh is a tyrant he's killing the people he's torturing them he's doing this and that He's uh, worshipping so many gods, but still, when you talk to him, talk to him in a nice and gentle way. And in the Quran, Allah Azza wa talks to us, to the Muslim Ummah generally, you say, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idati al hasana, wajadilhum bil lahi hiya ahsan. When you call them to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to Islam, call them with wisdom. Wisdom. And good advice, maw'id al-hasana. Wajadiluhum, if you come to argue with them, argue in the best way, in the most gentle way, if you can say. So this is what we need to do in our life. You know, to be gentle when we are calling the people to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though those people who are talking to them are biggest enemies of Islam, are haters who hate Islam. Explain to him the truth, if he take it, alhamdulillah. If he does not, you have done your part of calling him to Islam. One of the best examples we have in the Sunnah that when the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, one day was sitting, sitting next to the Kaaba, came to him Abu Walid ibn Utbah. You know, he came to him ibn Rabi'ah. So uh, Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, when he came to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Ya Muhammad, you know, we are the leaders of Mecca. We are noble people. So I'm coming today to present to you something that you might take. So would you listen to what I'm saying? So even though the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is anticipating what he's going to say, and he knows that he's going to offer him something to make him shift away from calling people to Islam. But he didn't say, no, I'm not going to take anything from you. And he started to scream or get angry. No, 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 no. He said, قُلْ يَا أَبَا الْوَلِيدِ أَسْمَعْ Oh, father of Al-Walid, say, say what you got to say. I'm listening to you. And this is the dialogue we are talking about. You know, maybe the person you're talking to him, you know straight that he does not match with your ideology or your way of life or your thoughts are not matching. But still, there must be a dialogue between both of you. If he agrees with you, that's fine. If he does not, then at least you run the conversation in a way that presents the facts that you believe in. So he said, say what you got to say. And he listened to him politely. So the man started to speak. And he is older than the Prophet Muhammad in age. And he's one of the leaders of the community at Mecca at the time. So the man said to the Prophet Muhammad you know that we're so rich. We can, if you are coming with Islam just to make money, we can collect and gather money for you and make you one of the richest people in Mecca. If this is going to please you. And if you're looking for a position, you want to be one of the top leaders of Mecca, we will give you a position. You know, because you used to take some members from every tribe and give them some positions in Mecca. You know, to make it like, look like a government, if you can say. So from that tribe, they get someone to be you know, the Minister of Foreign Affairs. He talks to the other tribes and other peoples, you know. Someone who's going to be the leader of the army, you know, the Minister of Defense. Someone who's going to be this and that. So he said, if you're looking to, for a position, we can give you a position, make you one of the leaders of Mecca. And if you have something wrong going to you, like magic or something, we can get someone to cure you. Look, he's putting to him different possibilities. So the Prophet Muhammad Listen, until the man finish what he's saying. The man is saying, you know, meaningless words. Something that does not make any sense to the Prophet Muhammad Even though the Prophet Muhammad listened to him to the end. And then when the man finished his offer, the Prophet Muhammad said to him one word. said, أَفَرَغْتَ يَا أَبَا الْوَلِي Are you done, father of Al-Wali? قَالَ نَعَمْ Yes. قَالَ فَوَاللَّهِ لو وضع الشمس في يميني والقمر في يساري عن على أن أترك هذا الأمر ما تركته. I swear by Allah, if you give me the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, which is impossible. So he's saying to him, if you were to make the impossible possible to me, 
I wouldn't leave the matter, that matter of Islam and calling people to Islam. And he said, Tasma'u minni. Now it's your turn to listen to me. Would you listen to me now? Qala na'am asma. Yes, I'm going to listen to you as you listen to me. So if you want someone to listen to you, you should be ready also to listen to them. This is how we run the dialogues. Not all the time you're talking, 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 and over-talking the people and think or expecting them to listen to what you're saying. You understand? If there is a dialogue between you and someone. So, qala tasma'u minni. Qala na'am asma'u minni. Yes, I'm going to listen to you. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started to recite for him the Qur'an. He read to him like two pages or three pages from the Qur'an and the man is putting his head down and listening to the ayat. And the ayat are very strong. فَإِنْ أَعْرَضُوا فَقُلْ أَنْذَرْتُكُمْ صَاعِقَةً مِثْلَ صَاعِقَةِ عَادٍ وَثَمُودٍ If they don't listen to you, then tell them that they warn you that Allah Azza wa is gonna destroy you as he destroyed Aad, the people of Aad and Thamud, and they heard about them. And the ayat kept going, you know, on until the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to the ayah that has a sajda. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made the sujood and he became quiet. Qala anta wa Then the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, what you listen to me right now is from the Quran. So this is your business now. You decide if you're gonna accept the message of Islam or not. So the man couldn't, you know, hold himself of being touched by the ayat of the Quran. It actually, you know, called him down. He was considering to accept Islam at that moment. And he went back to his own people who are watching him and watching the conversation between him and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then قالوا, Wallahi laqad aada bi ghayri al-wajhi alladhi dhahaba bih. We swear by Allah that this man came with another face. He went angry to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, defending our religion. But look at him right now. We can tell that he's affected by Islam. So when they talk to him, then he felt like he's surrounded by them. So he started to justify himself. He said, the words are good, the words are nice, this and that. And then he said, but I believe in hadha illa sihrun yu'thar. It could be magic. That's why it touches our hearts. So again, he shifted to the misguidance, to the dalala after that. But we're quoting this story to tell you that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he had the patience to talk to his own people who are not Muslim. And this is the whole thing that we're trying to say here for the brothers. If you are talking to someone who is not a Muslim, he's coming from a totally different background, and you are taking the step to offer him Islam, don't get mad or angry. Listen to him. Argue with him in the best way. If he accepts it, alhamdulillah. If he does not accept it, you are not going to control his mind. You are not going to control his heart. It's all in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are not in charge of him. Just remind them because you are just a reminder. You are not going to take control over them. Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is what we need to learn. When we are running dialogues and conversations, we need to calm down. We need to have patience. We need to have open chest and open heart to listen to words that do not match with what we're saying. One day, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was sitting and a Jewish man came to test the patience of the Prophet Muhammad This man heard about Islam. He was expecting the last Prophet to come. He knows his character. So he's coming to test every single character of the Prophet Muhammad He's around him most of the time. Until he found the chance that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, a man came to him and the man is telling the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, well, I called my people to Islam and they accepted Islam recently and I told them that if they fall in any hardship, Allah Azza wa will get them out of it. And now, we have kind of a starvation in our area. So we need some money. So the Prophet Muhammad looked to the Sahaba around him. Do we have any of the money of the Sadaqah left? A man shook his head and said, no, Prophet of Allah, we don't have it. So the Prophet Muhammad said, فَهَلْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ يُقْرِضُنَا Is there is anyone here who can give us even a loan to give it to this man and we will pay it back? So this Jewish man took the chance and said, yes, I can give you the loan. But I'm going to ask for this and that, you know, that you give me that much, you know, from the dates of Medina, from that place. So the Prophet ﷺ said, no, we give you 
the, the amount of dates, but you cannot spe specify the place. And we're going to tell you exactly when we're going to pay it back. Because هذا بيع الغرر. بيع الغرر is like when you are tricky. You are selling something that's not there yet. So he said, no. Let us say that we're going to give you, for example, 100 kilograms of dates. So we're going to give you that much. But we cannot leave it like vague like that. Undecided. So the Prophet put it the right way and he said, we'll give you that much if you give us the loan. So the man gave them the money and he gave it to the man. So when the time came after one month or a couple of months, the man came to the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. And the man was making it in purpose to get the Prophet angry. So he came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yelling, screaming, Ya Bani Abdul Muttalib, Antum Qawmun Matl. Oh, you are slick. You are bad people. Taking the money of the people and not giving it back. And he started to talk bad like this and loud in front of the Sahaba. So Umar ibn Khattab just jumped from his place and he get enraged and so angry. He want to take care of him. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ashara ilayhi an ya Umar ihda. Calm down Umar. And that was part of the character of Umar ibn al-Khattab. Not that he gets angry very easily, but indul hamiyya. He has this, you know, love to the Prophet Muhammad that he is acting like, if you can say, a protector, personal protector to Rasulullah sallallahu So the Prophet told him, calm down, Umar. وَإِنَّمَا تَسْتَطِيعُ أَن تَفْعَلَ خَيْرًا مِنْ ذَلِكَ You could have done better than that. أَن تَأْمُرَهُ بِحُسْنِ الطَّلَبِ You should have told him to ask for his money in a nice way. وَأَن تَأْمُرَنِي أَوْ تُذَكِّرَنِي بِحُسْنِ الْأَدَاءِ And you remind me to pay it back to him also early and in a nice way. This should be your rule. This should be what you are doing. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi talked to one of the Sahaba said, give him the dates. He whispered in his ear, give him the dates, that much dates that they have the deal about it. وَزِدْهُ عَلَيْهَا And give him that much extra. So the man went with the Sahabi, he gave him the dates and gave him the extra ones. He said, why are you giving me that extra date? He said, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi commanded me to give you that. So the man came back to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and right on the spot, he said, I said, an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. You know, I bear witnesses that there is no God except Allah and you are the messenger of Allah. قَالَ إِنَّمَا كُنْتُ أَخْتَبِرُ صَبْرَكَ لَأَنَّنَا قَرَأْنَا فِي كُتُبِنَا because we read in our books that the last prophet he does not get angry for himself and I tested that one and it's true about you so I accept Islam right away so because of the good manners of Rasulullah that's why the good manners we're talking about and speaking in a good way makes a big difference even on the day of judgment the prophet Muhammad said the people are going to be very close to me in the place on the day of judgment. Very close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those who have the best manners. Those are the ones, the people who have the best manners, are going to be the ones who are going to be so close, so near to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَإِنَّ مِنْ أَبْعَدَكُمْ مِنِّي مَجْلِسًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ But the people are going to be, you know, very far away from me. أَثَّرْثَارُونَ الْمُتَشَدِّقُونَ The people who talk too much and keep talking big words, meaningless words, just for the sake of speaking, you know. Those are going to be the people who are very far away from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when we speak, we do not just speak for the sake of speaking, you know, to, to be like a good speaker or, you know, someone who gets the attention of the people around you, talk about everything and anything. You speak what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what benefits you in the first place and benefits the brothers and sisters and the Muslim ummah uh, in all, inshallah ta'ala. قُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله فاللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Again when we are speaking to the brothers and sisters we speak in a way that does not infuriate them and make them angry meaning you don't have to speak too loud when you are speaking to your brothers and sisters when you speak loud, when there is no necessity, that's not from the manners of Islam at all. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned the Sahaba 
those people who are not aware of that when they're talking to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi specifically Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawt al-nabi When you're talking to the Prophet do not raise your voices over the voice of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Wa la tajharu lahu bil qawli ka jahri ba'dikum li ba'd Do not speak to him so loud as you do with each other Yeah, you might do it with your friend who's a family member and he's gonna accept it from you because you are so close but this is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he has the highest status in the ummah. So when you're talking to him, you have to talk to him with all due respect, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is one thing. You don't speak so loud unless there is something necessity, like you are giving a warning uh, or you are uh, warning someone that he might be hit by a car or something is going to happen to him. So you might scream at him to get his attention and warn him against that. Like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he speaks, you know, the people around him would listen to him, you know, uh, clearly. But he's not loud. Unless if he's giving a speech. Unless if he's giving a speech to the people. He will be like a warner. Warning of an enemy that's coming to them. He speaks loud. They don't have the microphones at the time. And there is a big crowd listening to Rasulullah so he goes loud so that everybody listens to him and everybody understands what he's saying sallallahu alaihi wasallam also one of the manners of the speech to speak in a way that understood by the people around you don't go so fast like the people who are going in auctions you barely can catch a word from what they say i tried many times to listen to what they're saying in videos i i couldn't catch a word so some people when they speak they go so fast like that no you don't need to do that كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ كَمَا قَلَتْ سَيْدَ عَيْشَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنَا وَرْضَاهَا يَتَكَلَّمُ كَلَامًا لَوْ عَدَّهُ الْعَادُ لَعَدَّهُ The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, he will speak in words that if you want to count them when you're sitting with him, you will count his words. Meaning he doesn't go that fast at all. His sentences are so short, so clear, so understood by anyone who listens to him. That's how the Sahaba actually remembered most of the ahadith and the speech that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was giving because he was speaking that way. And also, sometimes he would repeat some sentences that are so important. Why? So that people understand him fully and they know that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is putting an emphasis and saying that these words are so important to be remembered. So they will remember the words of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, one of the best manners that you're not going to find anywhere else except Islam is that we have something in, uh, in the language, in the Arabic language and in Islam that's called al kinaya al kinaya is a speaking in a metaphor, you know. When you are speaking about things that are not uh, appropriate to talk in front of little kids or, you know, uh, or something like that, or women, or then you're going to phrase them in a way that can be indirectly understood, but not directly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for example, in the Quran, when you touch the woman, and this is kinaya for the relationship. See, Allah does not say it straight like this, you see. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ جُنُوبًا فَالطَّهَّرُوا If you are in a state of janaba, janaba is impurity, then take a shower, see. In this beautiful way, the Quran will phrase, you know, the commands to the believers. Nothing is there is wrong. Even the little child can read it, you know, and there is nothing, you know, uh, wrong about it. So this is a beautiful thing about Islam. When you are speaking, you are picking the best way and the best style to say your own words and your own sentences. When you come to the foul language or a straight language or a bad language, you avoid all of that and put it in the best way you can say it. Learn from your book, from the Quran, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَتَأْتُونَ الْفَاحِشَةَ مَا سَبَقَكُمْ بِهَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying to the people of Lut, you are doing the fahisha, the evil things, the immoral things that nobody has done before you. Allah Azza wa Jalla did not name it straight like what it is because it's understood. It is known for the readers from the events and the story and you know, the background. It is all there. So you don't have to put it straight there. So this is one of the best things that we also learn from the Quran and from the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even the Prophet used to use that when a woman came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she was divorced three times from her husband and she get married to someone else and she wants to get a divorce to get back to her husband. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, قَالَ لَا حَتَّى تَذُوقَ عَسِيلَتَهُ وَيَذُوقَ عَسِيلَتَهَا 
So the Prophet Muhammad said, no, that's not an option to break the marriage. They just made the, the marriage on the paper. He said, no, until, you know, they taste each other or taste each other. So the Prophet Muhammad did not say it straight, you see. This is the best language that you can use. But unfortunately, in the modern time, we see that, uh, you know, our younger generation is taking it easy with a lot of words. You see a lot of bad words in their dictionary. You know, and they are just using it because the bigger community around them is using it. So you say, everybody's saying it, and they don't mean anything bad by it, so why not use it, you know? Uh, if he's talking to you about anything, this is if important, for example. He say, so he uses the if word as equivalent of the word very. And instead of saying very important, he would say if important. This is the level of using the bad words that we see around us, you know. So we have to be careful about that. You are a Muslim. You're not like anybody else. Even if everybody's using that language, you're not supposed to even get closer to it. Filter your own dictionary. See the words that you are using, the sentences, the idioms, the expressions. Use the best of them because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, When you speak to the people, say the good words.